hello everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here. And thank you to the organizers to uh, allowing me to introduce some microbiome research in Mongolia. And my name is Sali Hishik. I, am, I belong to Tal Lab of the Graduate School of Business of Mongolian University of Science and Technology. Maybe uh, you will be um, uh, uh, interested in why graduate of business uh, because this is the only graduate school in Mongolian, in Mongolia. So our lab focuses on different innovation projects, including uh, in different sectors like agriculture, food, nutrition, and health. Uh, to talk about microbiome research in Mongolia, and since also my research background is in human nutrition and food functionality, uh, I have to give you some uh, background in cultural and traditional features of Mongolian food. Milk and fermented dairy products are the main part of Mongolian diet. And it was since the ancient times, long history of diary, including numerous references from the past, as well as recent references, uh, uh, they show that Mongolian people used to have uh, milk consumption for thousands of years, as, as far away as almost 5,000 years ago. And um, this dairy practice uh, for thousand years, and um, it exhibited remarkable continuity through time with relatively few changes compared to nowadays. So here in the picture, you can see that recently we could find some pot full of milk fat uh, dating almost 800 years ago. Um, and the uh, practicing of dairying uh, the Mongolia has a, a very unique um, condition because Mongolian nomads used to milk uh, of seven different animal species, namely horse, camel, reindeer, yak, cow, sheep, and goat. And depending on the geographical regions, you can see like when you go to the north and western part, it's mostly mountainous area and people there milk mostly reindeer, yak, and cow. And when, when you go to middle part, it's mostly grassland and nomads milk their horse. And when you go to the southern part, it's mostly camel and goat are milk for, for the food, for the human consumption. Uh, because we have this extensive history of dairying and using milk in our daily uh, food, we have a lot of different kinds of milk products. We can list almost 300 different dairy products, including cheese, curd, yogurt, drinks, and even some specific products like fermented cat fat. And uh, until now, the population of Mongolia, uh, almost 40% is still contain uh, nomadic way of lifestyle. And, uh, uh, this year, we also counted almost 70 million animals. So you can guess that milk and meat are the pillars of Mongolian cuisine and nutrition resources. So here, I just wanted to show a picture of a gear that, that, that is a traditional dwelling of Mongolian nomads. So why I show this picture is because gear itself is also Eco environment, not only for human, but also for microbes, because uh, from these long traditions, we have specific customs to store our uh, our items or uh, utilities used for uh, dairy production. For example, when you go to the gear, only on the right side, the fermenting bag made of cowhide is hanged. It's not, not anywhere else, only on the right side. And even and the walls of the gear itself will be painted with the milk and other dairy products. And also the right uh, hand side is used for keeping uh, nomadic things used for animal husbandry. 
So from the engineering side, when you go to the gear, uh, when you open the door and go to the gear, the air flows from the right side to the center and up to the left side. So distributing whole things, including microbes from grassland, from animal, from human, from food around the environment. So here I just show some uh, traditional behavior and uh, cultural things. For example, um, uh, the Iraq, uh, that is the fermented mare's milk, uh, is widely used during summertime and it is fermented in this cowhide and these cowhides are not sterilized or washed or whatever after milking season ends. It is stored in a clean condition and used for the next milking period. And during the summer days, nomadic men can drink up to 10 liters of ira per day. So you can imagine how much of milk and how much of lactose in the milk they can consume and digest. So in the right hand side are some babies uh, best in a way. And from the traditions, it says the babies best in a way, they grow strong uh, with uh, a strong immunity uh, and health. Okay, um, some microbiome research features in Mongolia. Uh, the human microbiome research is quite recent. In the first paper about uh, Mongolian gut microbiome was published in 2016 by Inner Mongolian uh, scientists. And they, uh, they, uh, they said that uh, the Mongolian gut microbiome was very unique to compare to European and Han people in terms of high prevalence of Prevotella as well as Bifidobacteria. And the next uh, uh, big study is done by Asian Microbiome Group uh, about this uh, group results. It was talked yesterday during Professor Lee's uh, presentation from uh, University of Singapore and also today uh, from Professor Nakayama's presentation. So it just highlight the findings of uh, distinctive features of Mongolian microbiome it's, uh, it contains a high amount of uh, relative abundance of lactobacillus to compare to other nations like Korea, Thailand, China, Japan, and Indonesia. And also it was confirmed that Privatella species are uh, abundant. And there are some local small scale studies uh, uh, published in uh, local journals, uh, and but mostly, uh, of them are focused on the isolation of different beneficial bacteria from fecal sample or from dairy products uh, and the functional uh, analysis and associated host factors uh, uh, studied in those studies. Uh, the latest study is um, done by the Max Planck Institution Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology of Germany. And uh, the microbiome group leader, uh, Christina Warner, she's uh, my partner. And we, uh, since 2016, we are doing in Mongolia two different projects like Hello Microbiomes and Dairy Culture. And now the, now, uh, the Dairy Culture project is still going on. And uh, what is the purpose of Baba project is, um, in spite of long history of consumption of milk products, um, on genetic level, the Mongolian people are considered, considered to be lactose intolerant. So there is a milk paradox. How the people uh, uh, genetically lactose intolerance, intolerant can consume such an enormous amount of milk and digest the milk. So our uh, idea is, uh, the bacteria in the Mongolian gut, they have some impact on the digestion of lactose. And because of that, uh, the people used to use um, much amount of milk in their daily consumption. So our um, study group um, recruited uh, sample size from different regions, like from the northern part, 
uh, of the country. It's almost uh, 800 kilometers from the city, uh, from the capital city, and from grassland part, uh, because mainly here people con consume horse milk, and from the thousand part, uh, which is almost 500 away from the capital city, and the most of the milk comes from the uh, camel and goat. So uh, the total our sample size is 100 people, including urban and rural population, and mostly adults are engaged in a study. And we are doing uh, analysis of seasonal variation in terms of diet, uh, body composition, phenotyping of lactose persistence, and genotyping of lactose persistence, gut microbiome, and environmental microbiome. So here you can see the pictures of our group members how they collect the data in an open space in a nomadic culture. Uh, and you know, uh, the, all the foods they eat, uh, they are measured in a scale precisely and recorded in a paper. Uh, I cannot uh, uh, introduce uh, some results because it's on analysis stage. Just briefly, what we could find out is uh, in a microbiome, of Mongolian uh, nomadic uh, nomads. Uh, the bifidobacterium is very dominant uh, microbes. And as you can see in this graph, the relative uh, abundance of bifidobacterium in some people can reach as high as 50%. So it's not seen in any other nations in the world, I guess. Uh, so this is the end of uh, giving overview of microbiome study in Mongolia. There are, of course, many studies on the environmental human and food, uh, but it's mostly on isolation of specific strains of bacteria um, rather than giving the whole picture of uh, microbiome situation. Uh, on the other hand, as uh, similar with other developing countries, we are having treats to microbiota because we have a high urbanization rate and almost uh, half of the population lives in Ulaanbaatar, which is the capital city. And many people from nomadic culture, they're moving to the city. And on the other hand, we are losing our traditions and we are losing our microbes uh, who, uh, who are being maintained by the nomadic cultures. And also we have a dramatic change of uh, diet and food systems like a convenience stores or a fast foods um, becoming more common in a city and almost penetrating to the rural areas. And uh, like modern achievements such as plastics are becoming common in the use uh, in nomadic culture for making different kinds of food and other things. For example, here in the blue uh, pot, you can see uh, they're making IRAC, the fermented milk uh, that we used to use before cow hides for the fermentation. And the pollutions and the interaction of uh, nomadic people with animals are becoming far and far because and nowadays they are not using any more horses or camels for uh, for the posturing of animals, but motorbikes and so on. And in addition, climate change and pollution is giving impact to treat, to treat the microbiota in all the way. Um, the microbiome research challenges in Mongolia. So as you saw, uh, we are on the early stage of doing human microbiome research in Mongolia. And we, um, we have to do many things in terms of uh, relationship of, of microbiota to different health outcomes, as well as interactions and dietary changes, how they influence the gut microbiota in the future of Mongolian people. Um, how microbiome research is regulated on legislative level, in 2022, we approved the law on genetic resources. So through this law, everything, uh, including the research activities are regulated. And what challenges we have in Mongolia, uh, there are institutions like different universities, they do uh, different work on 
isolation of microbes, or keeping their microbes, creating their bacterial banks, but we don't have a sound networking. We lack of shared database. So even for myself, I used to go to different places to find out who's yeah, doing minute. what and so on. And mm. uh, of course, um, I think it is also more uh, uh, important part, uh, not only um, uh, for, uh, for researchers, uh, we have to do uh, public awareness uh, to keep the indigenous microbes and everything, because I know from my experience, when we went to the nomadic culture and we would ask people, do you think you have bacteria in your food? They would say, no, our food is clean. So uh, the, uh, the tradition, traditional way, uh, the knowledge was transferred, but uh, they don't know what is exactly inside. And if they would know, I, I think they would make much effort to keep those things, I mean, including the microbes. Uh, okay, the last but not the least, we... Uh, yeah. Yeah okay. yeah, okay, the last thing, yeah. we are needing bioinformatics people more, and of course, their finance and limited funds to restrict our uh, research activities. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sonia, uh, for uh, an overview of a microbiome research in Mongolia.